2022 Hyundai Kona inline. This is just one step below the full blown end car with the two liter turbocharged engine. This still has turbo power with the 1.6 liter, 195 horsepower, 195 pound feed torque made it to the seven speed dual clutch. Let's talk about the exterior real quick. This color is called Blue Wave. Uh, it's kind of like this powderish electric blue. I think it's a pretty color. We have exclusive front end styling for this vehicle in line badge on the front. A little wing down there at the bottom makes this vehicle look like it's flying. We have very attractive 18 inch wheels, paint matched fender over arches, another inline badge on the front fender, nice gloss black side mirrors. The side profile of this vehicle looks pretty short. There's not much going on behind the rear door and this is definitely in a real small subcompact crossover segment. So come around to the back. If you thought the front was busy, I think the back is even one step more aggressive. We have what seems to be like three layers of lights. We have, of course, the tail lights, or should I say the brake lights up top. Then on the bottom, you're going to have your reverse lights and blinkers. And then below that are just some honeycomb cutouts. The bottom, we have this large diffuser. We have some real nice dual exhaust tips back here. I really appreciate Hyundai giving us some nice looking tips. Now, this is a front wheel drive model. The front wheel drive model gives you a torsion beam in the back. If you go to the all wheel drive, you get a multi-link suspension, kind of like the Elantra inline. This vehicle is very much similar to that vehicle, but this doesn't get the upgraded rear suspension like that vehicle does. It's definitely a cute car. It's going to turn some heads. I like the blacked out roof rails as well, but we're going to get inside and check out this interior. It is very basic, but let's start with the highlights of this interior. The leather wrap steering wheel with the N logo is incredible. It feels like it's pulled straight out of the Elantra N or the Kona N, as well as the shifter. Very high quality. You gotta love the leather, as well as the stitching on both of them. The other thing I really like about this interior is these vents. These circular vents have a real good resistance to them. They feel great. Same thing with these center vents. They feel super high quality. And that's where the high quality kind of ends in this vehicle. These seats or cloth they look cool but not that comfortable this is soft touch here but this is the like the only soft touch piece in the whole vehicle everything else hard touch everywhere and the armrest here i don't even like putting my armrest on it or resting my arm it should be called like the arm unrest because this is plastic i'd probably if this is my vehicle i'd be switching out or just adhering a soft cushion here maybe like a keyboard hand rest that i would just slap on here matte black plastic around the window switches which i'm okay with it's not going to blind me now this has an upgraded tech package so we have the larger screen here you have wireless apple car sorry wired apple carplay wired android auto uh, it's a great screen and it's no different than any other Hyundai product. We still have the volume knob and tune knob, both of them. Thank you Hyundai for including both of those. We also have climate control knobs down here. So everything is very functional. We don't have dual climate control, but I'm okay with that because this other knob controls the fan speed. We also have heated seats and this upgraded package not only gives you the larger screen, but it gives you the Harman Kardon sound system, which sounds really good in here. I haven't heard any like rattles or anything like that. And it gets very loud. We also have this sunroof that is on this additional tech package. We also have a wireless charger in here, uh, another charger as well. This USB is gonna connect your uh, CarPlay, Android Auto, and then you also have a 12 volt accessory. Get into the back seat, it's tight. So this seat in front of me is set up at six foot one, and my knees are into the hard black plastic portion of this chair. It's really unfortunate. I feel like I had more leg room in the Elantra in line when I drove that a couple weeks ago. Uh, we also have no vents, no connections back here. Now it's a small vehicle and I do like the vents where you could probably angle them to get enough airflow back here, but this is not a place where I'd want to spend a lot of time. So I'm going to go ahead and get out and I'm going to get back in the front seat. Uh, those rear seats do fold down and you do have a good amount of cargo space. I'll put some B-roll in there for you guys to check that out. So it is a functional vehicle, especially with the lift gate. We're gonna back out uh, and you can see we have a fairly high quality backup camera. It is not a 360 camera, even though this is uh, on the higher end of the trim for the Kona line. And one of the things that's really impressed me about this vehicle is its fuel economy. I'm getting over 36 miles per gallon, over 50 miles of driving. Most of it's been pretty generous to it. So a little bit of city driving, as well as, uh, you know, sustained driving around 45 to 55 miles per hour, which is ideal for that fuel economy. And the engine just turned off, the AC kind of cuts off, but it does help 
save that uh, fuel, especially with today's gas prices, that is a nice thing. So we're gonna twist it into sport mode and we're going to get into this 1.6 turbo with the seven speed DCT. I'm just gonna hammer down. It shifted around 6,000 RPM. And this is where I'd want to like use the paddle shifters to, to start like downshifting and play around with it. But I do have this sequential shifter over here that I can pop it in and control the gears a little bit. And handling around the post office truck or mail delivery courier, whatever you want to call it, this thing handles better than you would think. And no, this doesn't have that more sophisticated uh, multi-link in the back, but it still feels really glued down. You don't have that much body roll or or you're, I should say you're, you would expect more body roll in an SUV like this, but it just doesn't happen. It feels really comfortable and very composed when you throw this vehicle into turns. And that's kind of the same for its more high performance brother, the Kona N. Like that vehicle defies physics in a lot of ways. That thing is absolutely incredible. It goes toe to toe around the track with the, uh, the smaller, uh, and lower to the ground Elantra and it's a very impressive vehicle. Now this has the seven speed dual clutch instead of the uh, Kona N and Elantra N's eight speed dual clutch. It's not nearly as quick. It's not nearly as satisfying to me. It, it almost feels like just a normal regular transmission. It doesn't feel that zippy or anything. Getting on the brakes hard here behind this dump truck and you heard the keys flying around in the cup holders. The brakes feel really good, uh, inspire a lot of confidence here. And I'm gonna pull out in front of this vehicle, I'm just gonna floor it, which a little bit of a little bit of traction control kicked in and I'm already caught up to the, the dump truck. And that's the same response that I had on the Elantra inline, is that this vehicle just doesn't launch hard. That's with traction control on and stability control on. And I will disable that here in a second to give you guys a better idea of zero to 60. Now I don't have my launch meter or should I say my race meter in here, my race box, whatever you want to call it, that measures very accurately zero to 60. I know this vehicle will be around the mid sevens to around eight. I don't have perfect conditions by any means. It's a little on the hot end today too. Now I'm going around 60 miles per hour and I feel like this is one of the big upgrades this vehicle has over its sedan brother, the Elantra. It seems much quieter up to speed. I don't get any annoyances from wind noise or road noise. It's there, but it's not overbearing like it is on the Elantra, for example. Now I'm going a little over 50 miles an hour. I'm in normal mode. I'm going to pass this dump truck, hammer down and go. A little delay as it picked the right gear. So even though it's a dual clutch, I mean, it keeps pulling hard. I got it up to like over 80 there. So this vehicle does, does pull hard over 60 miles an hour. This little 1.6 liter is quite impressive in that regard. And one of the things also the tech package gives you, which if you're get, looking at this vehicle, seriously, you have to get this package. This gives you so much for not that much money, around 2,500 bucks. It gives you the lane keep assist, radar cruise control, as well as the big screen, uh, the sunroof that I mentioned earlier, as well as the Harman Kardon. To me, it's a no brainer. We're gonna pull off to the side here and we're going to hang out for a bit, wait for some traffic to pass, and we'll do a little zero to 60 action here. So I'm gonna switch it into sport mode, which is funny. There's also a smart mode, which is kind of like their eco mode. Um, I guess you're not smart if you drive in normal mode or sport mode, but we're going to hold this down. And the next this button is downhill assist control. So that's an impressive feature for this vehicle to have downhill assist control, but we're pressing hold down the attraction control button and it's also going to take off stability control. All right, we got a little clearing here. I'm going to torque brake to about 2000. That's all it'll let me and go and nothing happens. It did not launch hard at all. First gear is fairly aggressive, <laughs> but there was no hard launching there. So <laughs> zero to 60 is probably right around seven and a half to eight seconds. No surprise there. Unfortunately, I had the same sort of launching experience as I did in the Elantra in line. And in that vehicle, I would be getting the six speed manual. I didn't get a chance to test, test that car in the six speed manual. You cannot get that six speed manual in this vehicle at all. So we're gonna turn it back into normal mode here and 
maximize those MPGs. Even after me flooring it and driving pretty aggressive there, I'm still getting over 35 miles per gallon. Pretty impressive for a boxy little crossover to get over 35 miles per gallon. So this vehicle in front wheel drive guys comes in at just under $30,000. If you want all wheel drive, it adds an additional 1,500. And so at that point, you're almost at 32,000 and you're knocking on the doors of the Kona Inn. The Kona Inn is a much better car in every sense of the word. Uh, more features, more power, handles better, looks cooler. You get those real fat, big exhaust tips on it. To me, the, the Elantra N and the Kona N, once you go over $30,000 on those base cars for the Elantra and the Kona, you might as well spend a little extra money and get the far better Kona N and Elantra N. Uh, I know those vehicles don't come in all-wheel drive. You need all-wheel drive, I guess. But we're going to throw this vehicle in here going around 40 Oh my gosh, yeah, it handles so good for a boxy SUV. And get back on the brakes. And uh, the suspension does okay. Speaking of, uh, you know, the torsion beam, the ride quality in here is actually pretty good. You would never guess that this is a torsion beam. So it's pretty impressive overall with the ride quality for a cheaper made suspension. Gonna get back onto the brakes hard here and test out the turning radius. Yeah. The car brakes well and it doesn't have that much like body uh body dipping either so it doesn't dive that much is what i'm trying to say and accelerate out of that <laughs> there's 60 like it has plenty of power for the average person zero to 60 under eight seconds should be enough power does this vehicle live up to the inline badge yes it absolutely does in some ways i like this vehicle better than the elantra inline because i got you know more modern amenities to me it definitely seems like a, a half generation half generation newer vehicle uh, compared to the elantra inline with the digital display back here if i sit up a little bit higher i have better visibility than that vehicle and what's crazy is that i'm getting better fuel economy than that vehicle and i thought oh there's a cone in front of me another one point 6t it's crazy anyways um that one's not the inline because you guys can see that it doesn't have the really cool exhaust tip and the more aggressive rear end but it does have some cool roof rails to it but yeah that vehicle is going to be the exact same speed as this i'm i don't know off the top of my head if that retired police officer kona in front of me has uh, the seven speed uh, dual clutch or if it has a different transmission but we're going to get back into the gas here and summarize this vehicle <laughs> <laughs> it's a fun little car it's not gonna blow anyone's minds that's what the bigger brother the more expensive brother the kona n is and if you're already spending 30 grand at this vehicle save your pennies guys save your pennies because the full-blown kona n is definitely worth your money um, i saw for the first time an elantra n on the streets uh, this morning and that just brought a smile to my face just looking at the car because when i drove the kona n and the elantra n Atlanta Motorsports Park a few months ago. I couldn't believe how much fun and power and performance those cars gave for the money. So anyways, this car is still a good deal. I would just spend, uh, I would save up a little bit longer and get the Kona in if I was in the market for this sort of vehicle. But I'll see you guys down below. What are your thoughts about the Kona inline with a little 1.6 liter turbo? Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, subscribe for more Hyundai and Kia and Genesis news and reviews as well as all Korean and Japanese auto news and reviews. What do you think about this per first person view? It's a little bit new for me and the channel. Um, I typically have it suction cupped to the, the roof here. Some people prefer that. Some some people also like this first person or point of view driving as well anyways see you guys in the in the comments and in the next video I need to cut myself off i tend to ramble <laughs> peace